top of the roof. It's 28 below outside this morning. At least my pillow didn't freeze to the wall again. But that's okay, because we're going to the top of the world today. I've been doing some expediting lately the last few months for Tyson Mining. And they have a remote mine site up north that um, they're taking core samples to send out for gold assay. And what expediting what I mean is I'm the person that's responsible to keep the mine operating. I do whatever is necessary. I do crew changes, I do payroll, I do accounts payable, I do, uh, I hunt down and find parts and equipment and get it shipped north. But my most important job is I'm actually the, commu the only communication between the mine site and the outside world. I have a radio telephone that they set up in my office, and every other day I speak to the mine manager, his name is Peter, and last time I spoke to Peter, he asked me, he says, I know you're sending me some parts soon, why don't you come up with them? And that way we can meet, because we've talked a lot on the phone, but we've never met each other. And he says, well, I'll give you a tour of the place. I thought, oh, okay, that's great. So that's where we're going today. I get out the airport, I park in front of Tarmac Terminal, and I walk in. Mind you, a terminal up there is one big room like this with a few chairs and a counter. <laughs> and I look out the back window, and I see my friend and pilot, Terry McAvoy, standing beside the Twin Otter that we're going to be flying in. Now, a Twin Otter is not a real small plane. It will hold 19 passenger to crew or 3,200-pound payload. But it's not real big either. Well, it's just Terry and I on the, I go out and talk to Terry, and there's just Terry and I on the plane. So I hop in the right seat, and he hops in the left, and he gets clearance from tower, and we take off. It's uh, February, so it's covered in snow. It's very cold. We fly over the Great Slave Lake, and he banks really hard to the left, and we go and do north. We're flying along, and all I can see, I look around, and all I see is Mother Nature looking beautiful, dressed in white. Now, we're trying to talk to each other, but there's a lot of crop noise. So, we do manage a little bit, but we spend a lot of time looking at the ground. <laughs> Go by um, the ground, I noticed as I was watching, that the trees are getting smaller, and they're getting farther apart. And they're getting smaller and farther apart. And all of a sudden, there's no trees at all. We have crossed a tree line, and we're in the tundra. It's perfectly flat. There's not, even, not only no trees, there's no hills, there's no valleys, there's not even boulders to break up your horizon. So I sit back in the seat, and I look ahead, and I'm absolutely stunned. Because what I see is the top of a white ball. I can actually see the curvature of the Earth. It's fascinating. We fly on the ways, and it's a two-hour flight, so all of a sudden we see that there's a disturbance up ahead in the snow. We fly over, and we look down, there's two APCO trailers and a Quonset hut, and a runway that's plowed on the lake on the ice. Well, Terry circles, and he sits us down like the pro that he is, and we get out of the plane, and Peter's there to meet us. And he takes us back to one of the aqua trailers, which is the cookhouse, and serves us the most fabulous lunch. And then we get the tour. So we go back out, we go past the other aqua trailer, he tells us, that's the bunkhouse, and then we go to the drift. And this is where they get the, the assay rock. Um, it's just a big hole in the ground that they have blasted out, but it goes down in a tunnel, not, not a, a shaft. It goes down in a, in a drift or <coughs> an incline, and you can walk right down into it. And we did, and Peter told us, you know, what they were doing, how they were doing it, and how many ounces of gold, you, you know, that they need to get to per ton of rock to, to do further exploration. So it was all very interesting, but it's getting late now, and, and Terry and I have to go because we want to get back to Yellowknife before it's dark. So we go and we stop at the Quonset hut because 
he takes us inside and shows us, and it's the shop, and it's absolutely amazing how much stuff they have up there in such a remote location. I mean, there's nobody for miles and miles and miles and miles. So we get back to the plane, and Terry and I take off, and it's a beautiful day, the sun's shining. I mean, it's still 30 below, but it's really very nice. And as we get closer and closer to Yellowknife, the weather starts to get bad. And it gets worse and worse. So when we're really quite close, Terry calls the white the Yellowknife Tower, and they say low, vis low visibility and a strong crosswind. Now he also asked about land, us landing over in Hay River, which is the only town like across the lake. And no, because they're in whiteout conditions. So Terry says to me, he says, like, uh, we're going to go into Yellowknife and we're going to try it. He says, but if we don't, we can go to Discovery. What Discovery is, is an abandoned mine. But it does have an emergency runway for exactly these type of situations. And it has buildings, so we have shelter. We have survival gear in the plane, and we're both dressed for the weather. So we'll survive. So we go into Yellowknife, and we're coming in on final approach. And the crosswind is, is really bad, and the, the, the visibility is, it really is bad weather. And we keep getting buffeted around, and we get closer and closer to the ground. And we get lined up with a runway, and then we get pushed off. Lined up with a runway, pushed off, we'll carry it, just slams us rolling forwards, pulls the wind, the reel back, and up we go again. He says, okay, one more try, and then discovery. He says, mind you, I've known Terry for years. He's an excellent pilot. I trust him completely, and I fly with him anywhere. So I just say, okay, fine. We go around. This time, when we're in final approach, Terry takes the nose of the plane, and he shifts it just a little bit toward the wind. Not into the wind, but a little bit. This pushes the plane this way, sideways. So we're going on final approach this direction, and just as we get close to the ground, Terry turns the nose and sets us down. When we get back inside, we're safe in the terminal. Terry says to me, I know that was a scary landing. He says, scared the hell out of me. <laughs> he says, but I really want to thank you for not screaming or saying anything until we touch down. It was really quite a remarkable day, and I really thank each and every one of you for joining me at the top of the world.